Your professors probably told you that elasticity does not equal slope. They're halfway right on that. It does for supply, but not demand. And we're gonna use the midpoint method here to visualize and really see for ourselves how this works. Now, before we get started, if you've got a test or quiz coming up and you're absolutely screwed for it, go check out my microeconomics cram kit on my website. I'll walk you through basically the entire class in around two hours with my 95 concept breakdowns. Free access available to you. So if you need it, go check it out. All right, we're gonna start here with the supply curve and see with the midpoint method how elasticity does equal slope. And then we'll go over to the demand curve and see how it does it. So with the supply curve, let's go ahead and just pick two points to go between. We'll pick this point right here as P1 with these blue price and quantity values, and this point as P2 with these green quantity and price values. And keep in mind, I'm gonna use super simple numbers right here just so we can see what's actually at play. All right, now what I've done here is plugged in P2 and P1 into our essentially midpoint method formula here. I'm just separating out from the numerator and denominator so that we can visualize easier. Because remember, on the top is the percent change in quantity, on the bottom is the percent change in price. When I solve these out and then divide them by one another, we get a price elasticity of supply value of 1.0 when we move from point 0.1 to point 0.2. Let's now go ahead and test this again, except move from different points to see if it remains the same. So instead of using this as our P2, we'll use this point right here. So I'll go ahead and update our green values. And I'll go ahead and update our values in the formula. And then now I'm going to go ahead and solve right here. So I'm gonna get this value for the numerator, this value for the denominator, I'm gonna divide each, resulting in 1.0 again as our price elasticity of supply value. The reason that this is happening, that we're getting the same price elasticity of supply value is because of the direct or positive relationship of the supply curve. As price increases, quantity also increases with it. So it doesn't really matter what points we're moving between, the slope of the supply curve is what's gonna determine our price elasticity of supply. Now this all changes when we're working with the demand curve because of its in inverse or negative relationship. As price increases, quantity decreases. And that's gonna mess with our midpoint method formula dependent on where our midpoint occurs. Now, before we pick these two points and solve for the midpoint method, there's elasticity regions that you need to know on the demand curve. If our midpoint falls right in the middle here, it's gonna be unit elastic. If our midpoint falls somewhere in this bottom half of the demand curve, it's gonna be inelastic. And if our midpoint falls somewhere on this top half of the curve, it'll be elastic. All right, let's go ahead and see this in action and kind of prove it. Let's start with the elastic region. Let's move between this point, which I'll mark in red here, and this point, I'll mark it in green. From here, let's plug in these two points into that midpoint method formula. And remember, it doesn't really matter which order you put them in, you're gonna get the same value. All right, I've plugged them in, let's go ahead and solve. All right, I got this value for my numerator, this one for my denominator, so let's go ahead and divide them, resulting in negative 1.7 as my price elasticity of demand value between these two points. And notice how their midpoint occurs right there, which falls in this range in the top half of my demand curve. The position of the midpoint on the demand curve determines its elasticity. Let's go ahead and try this again, except make our midpoint this unit elastic point. To do that, I'm gonna change this green point here to be this point right out here. All right, let's go ahead and update our green values in our midpoint method formula. And then from here, let's go ahead and solve. All right, I got this value for the numerator, this for the denominator. Let's go ahead and divide, resulting in negative 1.0 as our price elasticity of demand between these two points. And this makes sense because the price elasticity of demand of negative one means it's unit elastic. And the midpoint between these two points is that unit elastic region on the demand curve. I forgot to mention before, when our price elasticity of demand was negative 1.7 between these two points, any price elasticity of demand value less than negative one means it's elastic. That's the mathematical value for elastic demand, which made sense because those two points, the midpoint falls in the elastic region. All right, let's do this again with our midpoint falling in the inelastic region. And just to be clear here, our price elasticity of demand value should be greater than negative one, but it will always be negative, so less than zero. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this red point here to right here because the midpoint between these two falls in the inelastic region. All right, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and update our midpoint method formula values. And then now let's go ahead and solve for price elasticity of demand. All right, I got this value for the numerator, this for the denominator. You know what we're gonna do here. All right, I got negative 0.6 as my price elasticity of demand, which makes sense because that falls in the mathematical range of inelastic demand. All right, that was a ton right there, but that's why on the demand curve, elasticity does not equal slope. 
it depends on where your midpoint falls on the demand curve. With the supply curve, we can get lucky because of the direct relationship it holds. Slope just equals elasticity. But on the demand curve, it depends on where our midpoint falls due to that inverse negative relationship between price and quantity. If you like how I explain microeconomics, go check out that microeconomics cram kit I mentioned at the start of the video. It's essentially your fast track for getting caught up in this class and actually understanding what's going on. It takes about two hours to get through all the concept breakdowns and after that you're going to be feeling much better about actually grasping what your professor's talking about.